is the idea of whenever the student is ready, the teacher will uh, present itself. And it sounds like that's a theme mm. that you're experiencing right now in your life and really something that I've been experiencing as well mm. recently. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think just having gone through a, a difficult patch in my life, just unexpected turn of events um, within my relationship, um, just going through a breakup and everything. And I was just, you know, sharing with you that these experiences sometimes like we have to take the focus off of the other person and really turn it around and look at ourselves to understand why we end up in certain situations or have certain experiences that repeat themselves in our lives because it's it's ultimately that these people come into our lives to reflect something to us that we need to learn about ourselves that we, we need to deepen or we need to learn to love ourselves more or you know set boundaries or whatever that might be and i think that you really are empowered in your growth when you can sit there and, and really look at yourself and say, why did I attract this experience? You know, why is this in my life? Why is this happening right now? And instead of playing the victim role, which is very easy to slip into in right. difficult times, but instead of going that route to just say, what can I learn from this? Because this person came into my life as a teacher, as painful as it might've been, it was a teacher for me because there's something I have to learn to get me to where I really need to and You've had enough things occur in your life where it could very easily cultivate a victim mentality. Is there something that kind of shifted you away from that? Yeah, I would say the, so kind of the turning point in my life was when I was in like a really, really toxic, it was like five years ago. And it was, it was the relationship that really shook me. Um, and up until that point, I really was deeply rooted in, in victim consciousness. Um, I had grown up, had a really difficult childhood. I never really felt that I was loved or wanted or accepted. And I was just searching for some form of love and acceptance my whole life. And I never felt like I was good enough. And I had one of the greatest teachers for me was like a, this horrific relationship that I was in that was abusive on many levels. Um, and when I left that relationship, it was one of those moments where I said, you can either continue down this road and keep experiencing the same level of pain and abuse or you can do something about it. And it was like one of those moments I had with myself where, you know, whatever you want to call it, higher self, God, I don't know, whatever resonates with you is like kind of shook me and said, you are in control of your reality. No one else is doing this to you. You are in control of this. And it's up to you to make the change. It's up to you to stop, you know, repeating these cycles and these patterns and you get to choose that today, or you get to continue to have these experiences and the lessons coming, or you're going to learn, but it's up was to that, you. Was that like and, an intuitive sort of download or was that something you read or like, yeah. did it keep like just screaming at you? How did you, how did you hear that? It was, so I, I got to this point where I like literally was one of those moments where I was driving home from work. I remember, and I was like, I could just really easily swerve my car over and like, it could be over. I don't have to deal with this pain anymore. And then something just hit me. I remember just being in my car. I was like, yeah, that's the easy way out. All right. Or you can face what is happening to you and you can really get honest with yourself and you can start to make the change. And mm -hmm. something we just talked about this morning was you talking about was how you talked about this gap between, you know, that state of being and that's the vibrational energy that you've sent out. And mm -hmm. what the book I've been reading is a pocket full of happiness or a happy pocket full uh, happy, happy pocket, pocket full, of, full money. of money. Yeah. So yeah. good. One of my favorites. <laughs> so yeah, it's really good. I'm, you know, mo halfway through it right now. And something that, you know, the guy talks about in there is he talks about how, you know, there's your state of being and then there's your thoughts and emotions. And then there's the external world. It's mm -hmm. kind of how he breaks it down. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he specifically said it, but the way that I like the way that it was worded and the way it resonated with me was that, you create that state of being, that state of being influences mm -hmm. your emotions and thoughts. And then that gets projected mm -hmm. into your outside world through actions. And mm -hmm. so for you to, like you're saying, you change your state of being, but it's not like mm -hmm. you have to maintain that state of being based on that outside world coming back from your old state of being. It's like this ocean mm -hmm. and, and these, you're, you're propelling these waves and these frequencies out into the world. And it's the mirror. It's like you said, it's a mirror. It comes back to you. It might not be as instantaneous as mm -hmm. a mirror, but once it comes back to you, you need to hold that state of being that you previously held and realize like, 
no, 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 no. Like that's the old frequency. This isn't you anymore. You know, like you're kind of, I don't want to say past this, but that's your old self coming back at you. Yes. It's just, it's data. It's just information for you to say, okay, that's old thought, but you have to, I think Joe Dispenza says this, but you have to be able to think greater than you feel. So you have to be able to look beyond what you're currently experiencing and stop giving your attention and focus to that because otherwise you're going to just keep perpetuating the same experience. And that's why visualization is such a powerful tool because when you visualize your subconscious mind doesn't know whether it's actually happening or not, you're having the same physiological response in your body. You're having the same emotions of that thing actually happening for you. So when you visualize, you move yourself literally into that state of being in the reality that you want to experience. And so when you're in a difficult path or you're, you're in a reality experience that you don't want to experience, your greatest asset is your imagination. It's the, it's the really that portal to the possibility and the, the vibration of what you're seeking. And the more time you can spend in that energy, the faster it will materialize for you. Yeah, that's, and I think that's a huge part of it, right? Like transmutation yeah. of it, right? It's like when, because every emotion is really, it's one energy filtered through a story, through a right. thought, right? So the sadness that's coming out of you, it's filtered through a thought that you have. Like there's something that you're thinking about that is now you're saying, oh, I'm feeling sadness. I'm experiencing sadness. And we just have this natural inclination to want to move away from pain into pleasure. And that's why most people don't want to feel the pain. They don't want to feel the feelings. They'll quickly, you know, fill it with alcohol or another relationship or whatever, because they don't want to actually feel the feelings that they have. And, and then it becomes suppressed emotion, like you said, and it gets stuck in the body. And then people experience dis-ease, you know, there's joint pain, stomach pain, heart pain, like it just, it has to manifest in some way. And you, you know, you really just have to let that emotion move through your body as an energy without making it mean something. Instead of like letting yourself. it like impede or like become trapped. Mm -hmm. Become an identity, right? A lot of people say, I am an anxious person. Yeah. You know, it's like where I am depressed. It's like you have just identified yourself with an emotion that isn't meant to stay. It's meant to right. move through you. And you're supposed to be liberated yeah, it, by it. I think that's a beautiful way to kind of put it. And even just, you could even touch on just the I am statement as a whole, because mm -hmm. that's so powerful in its own rights. It's like, you know, me even saying I am Clayton, it's like, uh, are you, <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. like, what do you mean that you are, you know, someone, but then even to attach that to a feeling, I feel like it's a huge blunder in mm -hmm. and of itself. And even, even furthermore, um, I said this one time on the podcast, like Descartes, he, he said, I think, therefore I am. And I feel like that's mm -hmm. even a huge blunder on a societal level as well. It's like, you know, you're not because you think like, you know, an animal is, but it doesn't think it just is, you know? And it's, I, yeah. I feel like it's more like I am, therefore I am. Like, it's almost like something that language mm -hmm. can't even describe. Yeah. I am that I am, you know, it's just, you, you decide that we, we decide who we are. I mean, it's really the construct of the ego more than anything that's, that wants to identify as something. And the idea that it isn't something is what, you know, causes the ego death because we have to like compartmentalize ourselves into these, I am Lindsay and I have this and I do this and that's who I am. But I think we really truly find ourselves when we lose ourselves, when we lose that identity. Which is know? pretty beautiful, right? Because something in, I guess this kind of relates to politics, but I feel like majority of politics is predicated on a divide and conquer strategy. If you can create somebody to identify as another, right? You now have a perpetuator, you have a victim and you have a perpetuator. And so, you know, even from that level, it's like, you know, I, <laughs> this might sound weird, but it's not like I am Clayton and it's not like, you know, I am someone else, but it's like, you know, there's this level of oneness where it's like, I am Clayton, but I'm also Lindsay, but I'm also this house, but I'm also mm -hmm. this microphone. And so it gets like to this weird level yeah. of like, well, you know, how can you identify as anything? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's enlightenment, right? Like when the wave realizes it's the ocean, like we're all part of the same thing. And that's, I think that's when you can really feel unconditional love. That's the, 
is when you realize that you are the other. That's person. the crux of it. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are me. I am you. What I do to you, I also do to me. Yeah. You know, especially at a subconscious level, I find it fascinating when we wish ill will towards others or when we speak, we speak things about other people that are negative or mean, the subconscious takes you literally as that's what you want to experience. For right. Yourself. Right. So envy, judgment, hatred, projection, rejection to other people, you're doing that to yourself. And I Yin and the yang, you get it, you get all of it. I mean, it really is. It's about balance, about understanding that everything is inherently balanced. Even when you have horrible experiences happen to you and you're in a really low state, it just means that there's something you're, it's like pulling back a rubber band. When you go into the dark and you go into the pain and the, the suffering that you're experiencing, it has to slingshot you forward to a positive experience that equally balances that out. I mean, it's a cause and effect, karma, whatever you want to call it. It's like, you're not going to be stuck where you are forever. And the depth of the pain that you experience, it means that you're equally going to have an experience that's loving and abundant and joyful on the other side of that. And if you can keep that in mind as you're going through those rough patches and you know that nothing is permanent, it's temporary. And if you're feeling this now, then there's something so amazing that's on. That it reminds me of whenever I was going to college to become a computer engineer, you know, there were times of self doubt that would creep in. And, and the phrase that I would always tell myself was if it was easy, everyone could do it. And, you know, yeah. now looking back, I think everyone can do it. But the point is, is that, you know, that, that phrase alone was what like got me through college. Almost. It was like, anytime I found myself like, you know, in stress about a test or a quiz or, you know, not having studied, it was like, it was like, do you, do you want it to be easy? Like, if everything was easy mm -hmm. and perfect, there would be nothing. Like, like if there was, right. if you could imagine perfection, and this is what I tell people is I, I think the the difference between utopia and dystopia, it's like a circle. I think utopia and dystopia are right beside each other, you know, like, and I, mm -hmm. and I view this from all the atrocities of like the 19th century where it was the 20th century, the 20th century where, you know, you had massive amounts of, you know, genocide carried out in the name of, mm -hmm you know, this is going to be the best thing for the world. And, you know, it's like, you don't get perfection without the hell that comes with it almost. Yeah. I mean, it's, and I think too, like, it's also kind of a concept that we have as humans. It's like, in order to really value what comes out of it, there's a part of us that has to go through the difficult, the struggle, the effort, the hustle, because if it were just to like land in your lap, is it really going to have the same value to you? Are you, are you really going to appreciate it? And that's a key word. And I, I'm a firm believer that any time that we experience loss, it's an invitation to appreciation Okay. because anything that you, you really lose, it's like, it really does help you to appreciate it. It really helps you to appreciate, um, you know, what that loss brings into your life is like, Oh, wow, that really mattered to me. That was something that was really important. And, um, and I think that that the next time it comes around, you end up having more appreciation for it because you know what it feels to be with yeah, you can I had a buddy, uh, high school friend. I'm, uh, I'm back in my hometown right now for a bit. He we're driving in the car. I'm driving and he starts telling me about how he, uh, how he always attracts bad drivers. He's like, you know, there's always bad mm -hmm. drivers around me. Like da, 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 da. I have even brought this up to my coworkers. And he's like, I always talk to my you know, coworkers about like, well, what happened today in Kobe in Kobe driving to school and his coworkers, like, you know, always thought he was embellishing. So he rode in the car with him one time and they had an onslaught of bad drivers. And apparently the kid was eventually like, yeah, man, like, I don't know what it is with you, but like bad drivers are just, a, you know, attracted to you. Not 30 seconds after him telling the story, a guy in front of me like cuts me off. And then like another guy starts slowing down, like whenever it should be in the passing lane. And I'm like, dude, fuck, you're, you're going to give it to me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your word is your wand. I mean, literally. It's, it's like, so wild. You speak it into existence. It, it's like, it, it's like these have, it, it, our words have such magical powers around them that it, it's like a spell. It's like the, you know, whether or not you, literally believe in witches or not it's like the the construct that they're built around the idea the premise of what they held or do is true it's like it's real in a in a sense yeah. 
in, in reality. You think about writing, they call it spelling. Whoa. Whoa. Right? That's tripping. We're literally spelling with our words. Like you're, and, and you the just blew word, my mind. it's really not the word, it's the intention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's, where we are, we're casting spells with everything that we say. And it's, it's a vibrational frequency you put out through that intention of the word, just like with, I am, I mean, it's such a strong vibration that it, it bounces right back to you. You're getting that you're getting exactly what you're speaking. So I always tell people like, be the, the gatekeeper of your thoughts and the words that come out of your mouth, because you are literally creating with everything that you're speaking, even you know, things you're joking about, like the subconscious, the universe, it doesn't really have like a sense yeah. of humor. If you constantly are saying these things about yourself, even in jest, 